Hello and welcome back. Happy New Year for 2021. Let's hope this year is better than the last. In today's video, we will be reviewing the latest from AMD, which is the Radeon 6900 XTs. I have two of them on hand here, which are the Gigabyte Gaming OC and the XFX 6900 XT reference model. Big shout out to NVX System Integrators, PTE Limited for supplying the sample cards. With that, let's get into the benchmarks. The system was configured with the following settings to ensure that tests are fair between GPUs. XMP enabled which means that the memory runs at the intended 3200 MHz supported. GPUs plugged directly into the motherboard with the PCIe BIOS set to auto. This does mean that the PCIe 4 compliant cards will be allowed to run at Gen 4 and not forced down to Gen 3. Latest GPU drivers used at the time of test. For NVIDIA it was 461.09 and for AMD it was 20.12.1. All benchmarks were rerun because NVIDIA released an updated driver since the last benchmark video. The first test run using 3 Mark was Time Spy Extreme, which is a 4K DirectX 12 benchmark for gaming PCs. The results are interesting as the XFX 6900 XT leads the pack with the Gigabyte RTX 3080 in second, followed by Gigabyte 6900 XT in third from a graphics score perspective. From an FPS perspective, the XFS leads the pack by 4 frames per second, followed by Gigabyte 6900 XT and the RTX 3080 in second place. Next up, we have TimeSpy, which is a DirectX 12 benchmark for gaming PCs. In this test, we see that the Gigabyte 6900 XT takes the lead with the XFX 6900 XT in second, followed by the Gigabyte RTX 3080. We can see from this test that the graphics core may not correlate with the overall average frames per second as the XFX trails in third place from a graphics score perspective. Next up, we have Port Royal, which is a DirectX 12 real-time ray tracing benchmark. In this test, the RTX 3080 clearly takes the lead with the XFX 6900 XT in the second, trailing by 6 frames per second, followed by Gigabyte's 6900 XT trailing by a further 4 frames per second. Next up, we have Firestrike Ultra, which is a 4K DirectX 11 benchmark for gaming PCs. In this test, the 6900 XT leads the pack with the Gigabyte 6900 XT in second, followed by the RTX 3080 in third. Take note of the gap between the XFX 6900 XT and the RTX 3080, which is about 20 frames per second. Next up, we have Firestrike Extreme, which is a DirectX 11 benchmark for gaming PCs. In this test, the XFX 6900 XT leads the pack with the Gigabyte 6900 XT in second, followed by the RX 6800 in third. Take note of the gap between the XFX 6900 XT and the RTX 3080, which is just over 30 frames per second. The RX 6800 is also 7 frames per second ahead of the RTX 3080. Next up, we have Firestrike, which is another DirectX 11 benchmark for gaming PCs. In this test, we see that the XFX 6900 XT and the Gigabyte 6900 XT share first place in terms of frames per second, with the RX 6800 Aorus Master in second, followed by the Sapphire RX 6800 in third. Take note of the gap between the 6900 XTs and the RTX 3080, which is almost a lead of 60 frames per second. Looking at the DirectX 11 benchmark, it seems that the Radeon cards can outdo the Nvidia card, but do remember, this is only when testing in 3D Mark. I have done some initial game testing that suggests that the gains in DirectX 11 may not be relevant in games, so do check benchmarks on the specific games you are targeting. Next, we go into the benchmarks by Unigine. First on the list is Superposition. For this test, we have the resolution set to 4K, the shaders set to extreme, and the textures set to high. Here, we see the XFX 6900 XT takes the lead in first place, followed by the RTX 3080 in second, and the Gigabyte 6900 XT in third. This seems a little out of sync, so tests were rerun a few times to confirm that what we are seeing is correct. With all three cards hitting above 100 frames per second, the difference in gameplay will not be noticeable to the end user. Next, we drop the resolution from 4K down to 1440p. For this test, we set the shaders to extreme and the textures to high. Here, we see the RTX 3080 takes first place, the XFX 6900 XT in second, and the Gigabyte 6900 XT in third. From a frames per second perspective, 
perspective, there is only a one frame per second difference between the top three cards. Next, we drop the resolution from 1440p down to 1080p. For this test, we set the shaders to extreme and the textures to high. Here we see the Gigabyte 6900 XT takes first place, the RTX 3080 in second, and the XFX 6900 XT in third. From a frames per second perspective, again, there is only a one frame per second difference between the top three cards. The second benchmark tool by Unigine is Valley. In this test, we set the resolution to 1440p with the shaders to ultra and the textures set to high. For this test, the RTX 3080 takes first place followed by the XFX 6900 XT in second followed tightly by the Gigabyte 6900 XT. The interesting difference between this benchmark and the last is the big gap between the minimum and average frames per second. This shows a very wide gap between the minimum, average and even max frames per second observed in the test. For the next test, we are still running Valley, but drop the resolution to 1080p with the shaders to ultra and the textures set to high. For this test, the RTX 2080 Ti takes first place, followed by the RTX 3080 in second and the XFX 6900 XT in third, followed tightly by the Gigabyte 6900 XT. Yes, the 2080 Ti did come out on top for this test and additional validation tests were done to confirm this. The third benchmark tool by Unigine is Heaven. In this test, we set the resolution to 1440p with the shaders to ultra and the textures set to high. For this test, the XFX 6900 XT takes first place followed by the Gigabyte 6900 XT in second followed by the RTX 3080 in third. For the final Unigine test, we are still running Heaven but drop the resolution to 1080p with the shaders set to ultra and the textures set to high. For this test, the RTX 3080 takes first place followed by the Gigabyte 6900 XT in second and the XFX 6900 XT in third. To benchmark Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a number of settings needed to be kept constant. These are the resolution. We went with 4K, 1440p and 1080p uh, with VSync disabled. This is because the 4K monitor that we are using has a max refresh rate of 60 Hz. The tests were conducted using DirectX 12 only. Anti-aliasing was set to TAA. The graphics settings were set to the highest preset to ensure that the settings match across all cards. For the first test, we set the resolution to 4K and set the graphics preset to the highest. Here, we see the Gigabyte 6900 XT the XFX 6900 XT and the RTX 3080 share the top spot in terms of frames per second. From the perspective of frames rendered, the XFX 6900 XT takes the top spot. For the next test, we set the resolution to 1440p and set the graphics preset to the highest. Here, we see the Gigabyte 6900 XT takes the top spot followed by the XFX 6900 XT in second and the RTX 3080 in third. For the third and final test, we set the resolution to 1080p and set the graphics preset to the highest. Here, we see the Gigabyte 6900 XT takes the top spot, followed by the XFX 6900 XT in second, and the RTX 3080 in third. Some tests were also conducted using DirectX 11 for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but the results did not show what we saw in the 3D Mark DirectX 11 benchmarks, where the Radeon cards seem to take a clear lead over NVIDIA. This concludes our benchmarks that we have to share today. Hope this does help you with your future purchase decision uh, based on the information that we have just shared. Do remember that NVIDIA have recently increased the pricing to all AIB partners and therefore this price increase will be seen by the end user. In terms of supply, the market situation should improve towards the end of February once the Chinese New Year celebrations have concluded. Thanks for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe. And if there is anything specific that you would like us to cover in upcoming videos, do let us know in the comments below. With that, we'll see you in the next one.